What's up, guys? This is episode 13 of Shit I Feel Strongly About. I am Dr. Megan Weezer, uh, physio coach at Recharge. Um, this week has been inspired, or what we're talking about today has, is inspired by some of the stuff that I've been changing up for my workouts. Um, and if you are new here, I recently had surgery on my wrist. So I have like a claw here and I am still limited on what I can do um, with that. So I am officially six weeks out, so I can't quite do what I normally would be doing in my workout. So um, I've started changing things up a little bit. Um, but essentially the theme for today or what I want to talk about with you today is that progressive overload, that term can mean a lot of different things. So progressively overloading something can have a lot of different looks within one program. So when when you typically hear the word like progressive overload, your immediate thought is, well, I just need to progressively increase weight uh, as I get stronger and as I'm training and I need to do it sustainably and purposefully. And you'd be correct in thinking that obviously you should increase load. I mean, that's the only way you're going to get stronger. Um, and it's definitely necessary to progressively increase your weight, but that's not the only way that you can progress in skill and in strength and in overloading your body as a full system. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple different ways that you can do that without just perpetually like adding on weights and adding on weights and adding on weights until all of a sudden you can't do the lift you want to do. So the first method being increasing your time under tension. Now, this is what I was referring to in um, what I've been doing for my training so far. So I can only do so much right now and I can only lift so much with this arm right now. Um, so I have been slowing down a couple of my exercises. Um, so you'll hear that referred to as tempo or time under tension. Um, so you're increasing the length of time that your muscles and joints and your increasing the length of time that you are working for one repetition. So for example, a squat, you're taking five to 10 seconds to lower into the bottom of that position. Maybe you're holding there and then taking five to 10 seconds on the way up. It does not have to be five to 10 seconds. You're just slowing things down um, in comparison to what you normally would do. Um, now, these are it's, there's a lot of utility to increasing your time under tension. Um, and it's another great way to just progress the difficulty of things without just perpetually, you know, increasing weight and increasing weight and increasing weight. Um, so for me, like, I can only lift so much with one arm. I can only, you know, clean so big of a kettlebell to be able to do my walking lunges or my unilateral front squats or whatever. So <clears throat> I started doing some more time under tension stuff. Um, so that's a great way to just progress yourself without just increasing the weight. Um, it's also really, really healthy and good for just tendons, um, tendon health, joint health, um, all respond really well to slowing down. Um, and obviously there's other benefits to slowing down, right? You're more precise with your movements. You can kind of figure out where those sticking points are and the lifts are for you. Um, but all that being said, slow some things down and see how your body responds without adjusting too much of the weight. Second way, oh man, this is so sad looking. Second way you can um, increase your progressive overload is to go through a larger range of motion. So for example, squatting two or below parallel, getting your chest all the way to the floor for a push up, um, starting at that full lockout position, having the elbows locked out for a strict pull up versus just doing every single rep from here to here, right? So, um, increasing the range of motion of a certain exercise is a way to progressively overload. Like that is in itself a way to measure your success and your progress in that specific motion or in that specific exercise. Um, and obviously it's harder because your body has to adapt to and work through a larger range of motion. It's also going to be working a little bit longer, right? Like it takes, a lot more muscle effort to go through this range of motion versus this range of motion if we're thinking about like a squat or um, push-ups or anything really. Third way you can kind of progressively overload is to just increase your frequency of training. So, um, and this probably won't be an option for everybody, right? Like if you're already training five or six days a week, I don't know that it would be, depending on your goals and, and your schedule and your life, that might not be um, 
helpful to increase your frequency. But for somebody who, say, is working out one to two times a week and they want to, you know, progress and, you know, start getting stronger and see a little bit more progress, just adding another day and training more frequently or potentially adding on a little bit more into the sessions that they're already doing is in itself a way to just, you know, another way to progressively overload. Fourth way you can progressively overload without just tacking on more weight um, is to increase the like the skill itself or the technicality of the skill itself. So think like doing squat cleans versus a hang clean um, or strict pull-ups versus banded pull-ups or, you know, anything really. Um, increasing the difficulty of the skill is, again, another way that you are measuring the progress of your proficiency in that skill. And that is another way of progressively overloading your body and progressively overloading within a training program without having to add more weight. Um, like a squat clean at 100 pounds is going to be more difficult than a squat clean at 100 pounds. There are more technical requirements in that move than just a hang clean. So it's also a greater range of motion too, which was number two. Um, so inherently just in, in increasing the difficulty or the technicality of the skill is in itself a way that you are progressing. Um, and that's, you know, that in itself, you don't need to add more weight for it to become more difficult for you. Just that skill is going to be more difficult. <laughs> and lastly, my fifth way to progressively overload um, is to just increase your total volume or your total load. And what I mean by that is within, you know, within one session, like if you can't increase the frequency or increasing the load is just kind of out of the question um, or increasing range of motion or any of those other ways I kind of discussed, you can add on another set or try to add on more repetitions within a set or both. Um, so if you're doing, you know, five sets of three of back squat, Maybe you do five sets of four or you do six sets of three. You're increasing your total volume or how many total reps of something that you would have done with any workout. Same goes for load. Um, say last week you did five sets of three of the back squats. And today on the program, you have five sets of three. Again, maybe you do those first two sets at a lighter weight and those last three sets at heavier weights. Your total load will be more than what you did last week if you're starting off doing the same weight. So there's a lot of ways to progress without just continually tacking on weight. Um, but I want to note that like that is necessary for progressive overload and for you to get stronger. You do need to progress weight. But, you know, there's also a lot of ways that you can get better at things. So it's not just it, it, there's a lot of nuance and context to this, obviously, um, as with anything. But you don't just have to, you know, okay, I'm going to increase five pounds. Okay, I'm going to increase five pounds. Okay, I'm going to increase five pounds to the point where you're just like, God, this is kind of boring. Um, I think it mixes things up a little bit for those of you who are not, um, you know, for those of you who need a little bit more variety than, than going through and doing motions. Um, but I don't think we should understate the importance of getting good at the basics and continually doing things consistently. Um, I think consistency trumps um, variety, especially when you're first starting out with stuff. But anyway, there are a lot of ways to progress. Try out a couple of those. Let me know how they go or if you have any questions. on. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Look at that finger go. Um, and we'll see you next time.